Okay, welcome to the Screen Squad podcast here on the Great American Sports Network. We are being joined by uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, an actor with absolutely impeccable dramatic and comedic timing, one of my favorites in the business. It's Brad Leland. You know him as Buddy Garrity from Friday Night Lights, uh, among many other things. Uh, Brad, welcome to the show. Merry Christmas. How's everything going in your world, my man? Thanks. Merry Christmas, Clint. Hey, good, good to talk to you. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm just back from the capital of the United States of America shooting Pete, which was just uh, a dream come true in the fall. I, I've, I've done three seasons now with them, not, not the entire seasons, but uh, I've got a senator character that I play, and, and he's back in season four, and I, so I just got back from... Actually, the, all the Baltimore... Uh, Baltimore was... It was full of people with all the people coming in from the Army and Navy game, yeah. and I was leaving about that time. That is an exciting place during that game, which I don't know if everybody knows it, but 115 years in a row they've played that game, so yeah. that's cool. Unbelievable. I tell you what, I know you've been busy. Probably haven't had time to attend many football games. Definitely haven't probably got back to Dylan for a game because you've been busy. You know, you talked about V, but you've done, and I think you're going to be a recurring ger- uh, character here on Justified up in its upcoming season. I think you've been to France as well, man. You've been you've been kind of just everywhere this fall. I have. It's been a traveling fall and, a, and an experience, a great adventure, and playing different characters. Um, I played the, uh, the head of the CIA on uh, a French television show, which was quite an experience. My first time to do French TV, I had, I did go over there to film a couple of years ago, but, but that was interesting to, uh, to do French TV, and that'll be fun. I, I'll be on about five episodes of the show. It's sort of hard to pronounce, and basically in English, it's the legends. It's really about French espionage, but... Of course, uh, the, the final season of Justified, which, what a great cast. Of good yeah. People, a great bunch of actors. And they're very interesting. I call it uh, Southern Shakespeare, but the words are the words are very odd and interesting, the way they write that show. So we had a great time on a few episodes of that show where I play a, 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 a I got to meet an old friend who I hadn't seen in over 25 years, Sam Elliott, is yes. on that show this year. And uh, so we're kind of a new group of uh, good and bad guys on Justified. And then V, of course, is, is very exciting. I, I love that show. Julia Dreyfus is, is she's a wonderful person to work with as well as, you know, she's a great comedic actress. And just, she's, she's a great leader. I really enjoyed working with her. So that's what I, I've been all over the place this fall. We shot a movie in Oregon and... and uh, shut another one in L.A., so, yeah, it's been busy, busy time, good time. Absolutely. We always are on the lookout for you. I tell you, it's it's kind of funny to – there's something about you that just kind of stands out. Like I remember the very first time I ever noticed you in a movie, and it was just at the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You as the truck driver. It's just like there's just something about that guy. Like I don't know if it's just your size. Like you just stand out. You like I said, you have this timing. I can't explain it. Like you just kind of jump off the screen. I remember, I know you did the Patriot and other things before Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but man, you just have this way about you. And people are always like, oh yeah, that guy. They all they all everyone knows who you are because you just kind of have this aura about you, Brad. Well, thank you. I, it may just be that I have a, a, a giant head. <laughs> <laughs> it may, it may have been one, but I, it's, you know, as you get older, you start to, you start to, you know, humility has to creep in at some point. So hopefully that's happened. But well, they told me at one point, they said a lot of people on TV, they always, you know, they, they get people with big heads. So anyway. Yeah, that's that's definitely not. You know, as we move on, to talking about a show, it did not seem like had a lot of big egos, big heads on. And of course, Friday Night Lights. It's hard to believe, uh, Brad, that it's been uh, four years now that it's been off the air. It's unbelievable to even conceive of that. It's uh, uh, to me the greatest dramatic television show in the history, uh, you know, of television. I think, you know, of course, with your immediate run, your first run, the first. Uh, a couple seasons there on NBC, not the ratings you guys probably wanted, but as what is the, in your opinion, the legacy of the show? Because as the years have gone on, I talk to more people and I make more and more people watch this show that everyone says immediately, this is my favorite show. This is the best show I've ever seen. I mean, that has to mean something to you guys, right? It does. And that's very kind of you to say that. I, you know, so many people hold that show dear to their heart, of course, as, as we all do, that we're in it. And, you know, that is a family that'll never go away. We were, 
together six years, and including the film, which was a two years before. Sure. It, you know, basically, I did that character for nearly eight years, yeah. and it certainly became a huge part of my life, and then all of those people as well. So we we connect. We still, you know, are a family, although we're still all over the place now. Uh, we still see each other at events, and you know, occasionally, you know, we we see each other socially. So it's it's been. A, it's just been one of the coolest things that's ever happened to, to all of us as actors. And, you know, to, to get one of those in your life, that you're lucky. And then to, if, if you ever get another one, then you're, you're doubly lucky. But, uh, you know, I guess the, 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 the other part that's so cool about that is even though we've been gone, I didn't realize it's been four years, but I guess you're right. We've been off four yep. years. We have all these brand new fans who are just now watching it on Netflix yep. because they're understanding that it's not a show about football. Right. And, you know, from the very beginning, you know, the marketing was always about Texas football. So immediately there were lots of people, um, and, you know, uh, the, 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 the women, you know, that, that, that cared nothing about it. That market was never attended to properly in the beginning. And then, and then suddenly people realized that's, that's not what the show is. And, and uh, so it's really cool to, to have people come up now that, that uh, are just now watching it on Netflix and, and, and like everybody else, they're doing this, this binge watching now where you'll, you'll find people that watch the entire 75 <laughs> episodes in, in two weeks or yep. something insane, which is cool. You know, that's really fun to watch it that way because you just really get to follow the characters and watch the watch the arcs of the story and the characters. It's it's really, really fun. So. Yeah, Brad, to me, this is just I one of the... It. It's just one of the best written, well-paced uh, shows. I literally, when I tell people, I say, it's literally as if you are taken and dropped down into this town and you just get to sort of watch what's going on. It just had this genuine feel. And I, you've talked about it in interviews before where, you know... Uh, you, the actors had so much freedom. You guys kind of just, you, you know, you did a lot of improvising. The, the, the locations were real. I mean, how different is that, you know, than working on kind of other productions where it's, you know, you're on sound stages. I mean, this just had to be a different feel. Maybe that's what made the show so special. I think it is. I, you know, that's what did give it an organic feel and give you that feeling that you're a fly on the wall just watching these people's lives. Um, you know, although those steps went through lots of hands and lots of rewrites, before we got them, and they were tremendous, tremendous scripts to begin with. They did give us the freedom as, as the characters to to say what we wanted, and and there were many times when we would we would do the scripts exactly as they were written because the words were perfect and beautiful. And then there were times when we just felt like you know maybe we'll do this or that, and and we would we would go right off the book and just. Uh, create a little scene of our own. And, you know, it was always fun to do that. Especially Kyle and I always had a good time doing it because he would, he would make me laugh when we'd look at a two-page scene and sometimes he would just go, uh, I'm not going to say any of this. Just, uh, <laughs> you, you always talk all the time anyway, so you just talk and then I'm going to leave. And I'd go, okay, that sounds good. What? And so <laughs> we, we, would do, we would do that and it just would end up being a good scene and we would try it five or six different ways. So, what was very interesting about it is lots of times we would try to see so many different ways and so many different moods, actions that we would have no idea what the actors come up with because they would be sent this massive amount of film and then they would just piece it together so it would end up being a scene that we we had no idea what it was going to be when it came out. So that was it was fun for us as well to watch because it was always a surprise. Well, so there was a surprise to do it. There was a surprise yeah. to watch. Absolutely, and that and you know, I've seen you know a lot of behind the the scenes uh, filming on that stuff. And you guys, I mean, just I, I want to talk about this the character of, of Buddy Garrity because it's it's so funny because you were really throughout the show you were an antagonist, you were a protagonist, you were a villain, you were a good guy, you were hilarious. All these things. I, that's why I found your character so you know, so intriguing, and uh, you know, just kind of, and it seemed like, you know, your character, they took it, and, uh, you know, I don't know how much of this was you putting into it, but after the first couple seasons, you really went into a more kind of positive, you know, fun type guy, because in the first couple seasons, you you, you did some shady things, you, you went from heartfelt conversations <laughs> with your daughter to, to tearing up the strip club in season three, they're at the landing strip, Brad, I mean, you really ran the gambit. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was fun. And, you know, I tried from the very beginning to do something, and then I didn't understand, that, you know, that you can't, you know, having been a theater actor and then having done film and, and then having played, you know, cameo and, and co-starring roles in shows, I didn't realize that if you're going to be on a show that's la going to last years, which is the, was the plan all along, that they're not going to give away the entire character uh, in the beginning, yeah. which, which they do in a play. You know, you know, you build a whole character for two hours, like a game, you know. This is the game plan, and you, you play it. And the same way with the film. You, you get the whole character in a couple of hours. But when it's a television character, and they, and they intend to stretch it out, you know, there was no way, you know, for instance, in the very beginning scene. Now, Jason Street, who is going to become my son-in-law, uh, you know, is paralyzed. And it's the first scene of the show. And and so there was a great scene where Buddy comes in with his daughter and he's he's distraught and crying because he's, you know, his, his future son-in-law, this kid that he loves, who is going to be his daughter's husband and who is the quarterback of the team, is laying there and he knows how terrible it is. But, but just think, and, and I was... You know, I was very upset that that scene didn't make the first episode where Buddy was in there so upset that Jason Street was laying there injured. But but just think, there's no way they could have had that. True. I mean, it would have destroyed the entire character from the beginning because that was the coach's scene. He, he had to have that. And you couldn't have two. You know, you, yeah. so that part of Buddy could not be exposed from the very beginning. And, of course, I was, you know, I thought of two for now. So what are, you, what are you talking about? You know, why can't why can't we see that part? And they and they just kept telling me, you know, just, just hang on. Um, we got a long way to go, and it's a TV show. So, so I, I did a lot of learning in that. And they, you, you just give them little pieces of the character. And I certainly always wanted Buddy to be... The, the community guy and 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 have people understand that that Buddy was not doing it for selfish reasons, but for dramatic reasons, and because it's television, that's the way it worked out. And I always get a big kick out of people when they 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 I can tell what season they're in because they'll tell, <laughs> they'll tell me, uh, oh man, I, I love your show, and and I really hate that you you. You know, you, I just hate you. And I, and I went like, oh, you must be in season one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so anyway, I've had a good time with it, and, and it is great to have new fans on Netflix. So it, it's funny how that worked out. But, yeah, I always try to uh, to let them know that Buddy cared probably more about the community and his family than he did his own personal his own personal interest on Friday night. So. Uh, and I think you get that as it, as it goes on. I think I still got that out of you just to, even in some deleted scenes that made it just onto the DVDs like there you just had a lot of had really genuine moments I love Buddy so much and I, it's so funny my friends and I to this day will send texts back and forth uh, with different Buddy lines like even little stuff like let's deal with one crisis at a time Eric and, and <laughs> uh, I tell you what's funny we had uh, coach Gary Pinkle before Missouri played Alabama in the SEC championship game on and he said something about well Alabama's a pretty tough team and we went uh, went back to your character from the movie and said well, we're, we're a tough team too coach so uh Beat him. <laughs> I don't think he appreciated that too much, but we just couldn't couldn't help the opportunity. <laughs> it's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I, I do. I love that. And I, you know, we loved it when, you know, during the presidential race a couple of years ago, all of a sudden, you know, not only the president but candidates for the president were using our lines from the movie. So that's uh, that's quite a compliment. You know, we were flattered that they were using clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. That was a ball, you know, they're using it for real life and politics. So Yeah, it's amazing that how that works. And, I mean, you guys just, you did make quite a mark. I mean, just the, and then the characters, the actors, you talked about Kyle Chandler a little bit. I, want, I did want to ask you about that because uh, your chemistry with him and, and also with Connie Britton, who, of course, was in a movie as well with you in 2004 before the, the show began in 06. But uh, just talk about you know, the chemistry you had with those two in particular. Because those two, like, I cannot imagine the show without those two. They, they really were the glue that held the show together, I think. They were, they were, and I, you know, everybody talked about doing a movie after, and it, I, I, I had mixed feelings like they did. Of course, we would love to, and you would have loved for the show to continue, but it, they came up with a very good ending, and 
you know, to try to recreate the show in a film would have the script would have had to be perfect and to try to gather everybody up again that needed to be on the show would have been logistically probably impossible and and Pete's so busy, I don't know how he, he could have ever done it. He, he, he makes me laugh. I was just talking to him recently within the last couple of weeks and I said, you know, he does so many projects and so many uh, charities and benevolence. He's the busiest man in Hollywood. I, I said, Pete, when did you sleep? <laughs> and and he said, uh, I don't. It bores me. <laughs> that sounds like Peter Bird right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I really wondered how he did all of the things that he does. And, uh, and so he said, yeah, I just uh, I just keep going. So that's, oh. that's how Pete Berg keeps coming up with so much stuff. And uh, he, he's a great guy, too, and a great director. We, we all have, we have a, a special place in our heart for Pete for creating that show. Well, and you know, the, definitely heard talks of the movie, especially initially after the show ended. Would would love to see that if it were ever possible, you know. And it, it's it's be, it'd be very interesting to see where they where they went with it if where the writing would go. But I tell you what, just uh, you know, what a show. And I mean, you talk about you, you know Minka Kelly you're playing your daughter. You just you, this this cast that came together and and a tribute to the show. After season three, things turned around quite a bit. In seasons four and five, uh, we had a lot of new characters introduced, and and you got you. You know, Kyle Chandler, Connie Britton, you guys kind of had to hold it together as they eased in these new characters. I mean, I think that's a huge tribute to the show as well, to be able to bring in all these new people and and, go, and coach moves to a new program to East Dillon. You guys still produce such such wonderful television. I mean, that's just a huge testament to you guys, the actors, writers, everybody involved. Well, thank you. And it was cool the way all the new people came in. They got it, you know. They, they got there, and they got it. And, you know, look at Michael B. Jordan now. Mike's goodness. Yep. The kid came in and, and, you know, he had done The Wire and some things, certainly a trained actor in the theater, but this was kind of his big thing that introduced him, you know, in popularity and made him very recognizable. But my goodness, now the, now the guy's up for Academy Awards and pretty much out there picking and choosing the roles he wants to play. So that show was a, a springboard for everybody's career and certainly we've all... Uh, enjoyed just what it's done for for everything for for you know all the way around it's it's done a lot for a lot of people we've there's been a, there's been a lot of good charity work that came out of that too because of, of what what had to happen and and that was you know Al and I created a charity called beyond the lights which is all about a lot of people that that are in wheelchairs and that are getting up out of wheelchairs right. and and I'm still involved with an organization that that the Baratani set up, you know, 29 years ago, uh, and and it's all about people with spinal cord injuries, and not just athletes, uh, but everyone. So it's it's really a far-reaching thing, and it's it's certainly, as you well know, not just about football. It's pretty much about all of our lives. We found out that. That show stretches even into places not here. You know, they used to say, oh, it's all just about Texas. Well, it's not only just about every town in the United States, but uh, even people that watch it in other countries get it. Uh, as long as I grew up in a community, and it wasn't necessarily a giant urban yeah. community, but, but there's a sense of community about that show that the sport changes. You know, in Canada, it's hockey, and, and in South Africa, it's... it's rugby or, you know, soccer or whatever, you know, English football, but they get it. So it's uh, it's really been a joy to be a part of it. Thank you uh -huh. Yeah, it's something that will definitely live on. It definitely changed me as a huge sports fan and now, you know, doing a sports show. It's uh, it definitely, it even changed the way I watch football and enjoy things in general. Like, I mean, I, that it just, there's so many things. We could go on about it all day, Brad, and I just appreciate you taking the time to talk so much about Friday Night Lights because it is just uh, so meaningful to so many people. But I guess one specific sure. thing to, that I wanted to ask you about, and of course this goes back to season two, there was a writer's strike. It didn't quite get to finish the season, but uh, you had a, uh, you had a, a live-in there in uh, good old Santiago. I'm sure people ask you this all the time. Uh, Santiago goes away. I mean, how disappointed were you that you weren't be able, to, able to continue that? But I guess at the same time, what it did allow the writers to do is to put, to write Lila back in and to have her living with you for her senior year, which I thought was actually really cool, too. So, really, I think it uh, it worked out. But were you disappointed at all that you didn't get to continue with Santiago? Absolutely. And especially since we didn't have any idea what was going to happen. And we still don't. 
we have no idea what what that would have been. Um, we were never told, and I don't know that it was ever written. I mean, it was, the scripts were written at least three or four or five in advance, but, you know, there, sometimes television is not, the writings are not too far ahead of the shows, so we don't know what the end of season two was. I guess what we get 15 episodes yeah. out of 22, so those last seven we never do, and then when we got picked back up, we figured that they would pick back up with those stories, and they just went to a completely new place, and so that's the mystery there, you know, the mystery of whatever happened to Santiago and all the other people in that season. And it, it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting to speculate, but I did I did find something else very flattering about that, and, and a lot of people probably don't quickly think of this, but if you watch. <clears throat> If you watch that film that Sandra Bullock made, yep, Blindside, won Blindside that won an Academy Award, I believe, or two. Uh, that very exact scene between Santiago and I uh, was done in that movie, uh, and it's almost—it's. I, I don't. I've never actually compared the two scenes uh, line by line. But I've looked at some of the camera angles, and it, that's certainly the scene itself is exactly the scene that that Santiago and I did. Uh, that yeah. she does with him when he gets his first uh, bedroom, and the line is something like, you know, uh, oh, uh, is this the first time you've ever had your bedroom? And, and he says, no, this is the first time I've ever had my own bed. Yeah. So yeah. we were a little flattered. <laughs> they, they, two or three years later, they they liked our scene. <laughs> yeah, I remember thinking of that at the time. Like I remember, I think he told Santiago that exact same thing. Yeah, that that is so yeah. true. That's so true, that and that's cool. so many things. I mean, I, mean I, I think. I mean, I don't know the the way that the show was shot, the way the football scenes were shot. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, things that are going to be ripped from from this show as years go on. I mean, the, just. The way that uh, the on-screen football action goes, and I mean, and you're you're a guy. I mean, I wanted to ask you about this too. You, I mean, you played high school football. You played at Plano down there. I mean, you you have uh-huh. a, you have a history with Texas football. I mean, that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize. I think in the show they said you played at TMU, but you went to Texas Tech. You're a Red Raider, Brad. So feel free uh-huh. to, to toot that horn too. You know, while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I've got to always be a hardcore Texas Tech Red Raider because I, I graduated from there, and of course I didn't play ball there. My right. career I wouldn't have played in college. I really wasn't good enough, but I I certainly enjoyed my high school years of playing. When we were lucky enough to win the state championship my junior year, and something that a lot of people don't know that is you know the tremendous one for our of Friday Night Lights and how it matched my real life was that. I was literally standing on the sidelines at the state championship game in Memorial Stadium, not playing with a cast on my leg because I had just had knee surgery. Wow. So I didn't even play in the state game, which was exactly what ended up occurring in the storyline on our show. Yep. And, and that was not intended. Um, Buddy Jr. was to come in and become a superstar stud for you know, uh, the Lions, and, and that's the way he was going to get out of being, you know, a stray. Yeah. And become a, a, you know, and he actually, on his first day of shooting in uniform, when we had him becoming a, a stud there on the football field, he, they accidentally, during their celebration, jumped on his Achilles, tore his Achilles tendon in wow. real life. Wow. So the, so the actor was now injured. <laughs> uh, and and Jeff Rossick, I thought, oh my gosh, this is first role. They're going to ride him out of the show. Our whole storyline is going to be gone because he, he'll have to have surgery next week. He had surgery by the good surgeons there at the University of Texas, and they completely rewrote the storyline where he becomes a member of the team and learns what it is to be a part of all of that, even though he was injured. And how bizarre is that? It, it wow. was an exact duplicate of what happened in my real life. That's crazy. That's li- it, life imitates art. It, you know, it gave it so much more depth uh, to the character and to the whole story yeah. than if he had just come in and become, you know, a really good player. And and so it, that was very ironic and very strange and I think meant to be 
It's just, you know, and, and too bad he hurt his Achilles when he's falling down in our good buddies. Right. He, and I he I definitely looks. He that's awesome, and he definitely looked like he could be your son too. Just kind of he they the actor they got for that was perfect. He resembled the uh, the child actor enough, and also you know looked like he could have been himself as an older as an older adolescent. I mean, just what a perfect situation. I tell you what, Brad, I I feel bad. We have kept you way longer than than I had that's anticipated. Okay. I feel so bad. You are so gracious with your time. I I can't thank you enough, Brad. I tell you what, there's a. There's not a lot of people that are as uh, as genuine as you out there. You're a great actor and a nicer guy, man. I cannot thank you enough. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm I'm in no hurry. So if there's things you want to ask, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm in no hurry. So uh, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. I always like to tell the stories, and, and uh, there's a lot more where that came from. So, well, I, like I said earlier, you're... you're... probably have to edit. <laughs> right, <laughs> No, not, definitely not. Not editing anything, Brad, because I, like I, I told you, this is funny. I wasn't going to bring this up since we have a couple more minutes, and you're so uh, so pre- so uh, nice with your time. I, uh, you know, I told you my sister, who's uh, she's 27, and uh, she's a, she's a high school uh, track coach, and she said she's always been a huge Buddy Garrity fan. She just said she that's her, she's her favorite character ever, and she said one day she just looked at me, and she said, you know, I wish Buddy Garrity was my dad. So you've got, I mean, right there. I mean, I think that that. <laughs> That's pretty far reaching. That's the nicest right there. thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> that is so cool. Yes. Well, you, I love. Well, I love your sister. Oh, she, your sister her, said she wished Buddy that Dirty was her dad. That, yes, she my, did. This my is, daughter's laughing right now. I wish my own daughters would, you know, think that. Well, Dang, they should. God. They should remember that. And that's that's and that's Buddy Garrity. That's Buddy Garrity tearing up the landing strip and uh, not allowing <laughs> to send his daughter to college. And my sister still. She just. She just has. Had this says you had this warmth about you. She just she just she just loves you to death. So that's I hope you're I well, hope I you're. I hope we get to meet one of these days. Are you guys up in Kansas City? Is that where you are? Yeah, we broadcast from Kansas City here, Brad. If you're if, if you're ever if you're ever in the area for any reason whatsoever, I mean, we would absolutely love that more than anything. Oh yeah, I'd love to come out there and see a game. Uh, I'll uh, if, 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 if I'm bound to be shooting there, coming through there. When I do, I'll give you a call and. Uh, We'll go. We'll go see some sports because I'm. A, I'm a. I'm a. You know, great teams. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm. Like, people say I'm wishy-washy, but I just like great teams. And I, of course, I'm a lifelong Cowboys fan and I'm a Raider fan. But when your daughter goes to TCU, you suddenly get purple all over you, and you're a horn frog. And <laughs> when you're and, and when you're in Austin, as long as we were in Austin, and those people were so fine to us down there, I got orange blood in and through me now. I don't That's know what great. to do because I got a lot going all over me, and my granddad was an Aggie. So, you know, I got to like some Aggies. And, and so, I, I, you know, I'm just uh, I'm just a great sports fan. I like, I like great teams, and I'm, I'm, I'm just – I don't understand the haters. I think that's the only yeah. thing about sports. You know, when the, a fan, you know, comes from the word fanatic, and, and I understand that. But, but it's – you know, it truly is uh, just a game, and – even though it's it's an important thing in our lives, I think everybody should, should have some sport, you know, in their lives. Sure. Uh, you know, it just it just helps you. It's just a great thing for your body and your mind to to learn what it's like to be a part of a team and to learn what it's like to be in pain and struggle and push all the way through it. I think sports, you know, helps us uh, learn that. Not that that's the only way, but. For, for people who think who hate sports and just think it's uh, some some brutal thing for brutes and then people that you know they don't have a brain that play it, I I totally disagree with that. You know, so there's, there's a lot of brilliant people out there that are involved in sports and football is violent. I, I can tell you this now: I stand on the sidelines now and watch games and I wonder how I ever played that game or why. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are tough. <laughs> you know? Oh, they didn't have the concussion stats back then, Brad. They just kind of you got up and you kept playing, and there was no concussion <laughs> tests and stuff like that. But it, yeah. I'll tell you, yeah. hey, come to Kansas City. We'll get you to Arrowhead. Get you to a Chiefs game. And I'll tell you what, it would be, it would be kind of ironic, going to a game, Brad Leland watching the game, and then have him just say to people around him, "It's just a game, guys." I mean, can you imagine <laughs> Buddy Garrity just telling people around him it's just a game and not threatening, uh, you know, jobs? <laughs> that would be an ironic situation. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> and, the, and the 
Chiefs are great, man. You guys got a good. You guys cut him back with some good teams this year, you know. And, and lately, Chiefs are on their way back. I think. Yeah, and I tell you, it's been great. We cover uh, the, the Missouri Tigers here too. Just joined the SEC, and we were just down in College Station not long ago. So you said you got some Aggie blood in you. We were just there at uh, College Station, one of my favorite. And I, I was, I was always wished you guys would be able to shoot there at Kyle Field uh, during the show because actually, in the the original story of Friday Night Lights from the book, they uh, the '88 Permian Panthers played, I believe, that game. No, it was in Austin. They actually, they, I think, they played the real game in Austin instead of the uh, Astrodome. But uh, you know, just an artistic liberty. That they took, of course, with with the movie. But yeah, I mean, Kyle Field was amazing. All the venue I've been to, been down to Texas, been to Texas Tech, been to West Texas. Hey, there's nothing like Texas football, man. You know that more than anybody. That's cool. That's cool. You know, my uh, my good our good buddy Brad Chan, who is the voice of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we've had Brad on the show before. That's crazy. He uh, he's a Missouri guy. Yeah, yes, yeah, journalism yeah, school yeah. here. Brad Sham, we had him on last year uh, previewing the Chiefs and Cowboys. He's what a great guy. I'm, that's awesome you know him. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's one of the best. And he's, you know, of course, we're all looking forward to hopefully winning. If we can, you know, if we can win, if we can win this week and beat the Colts, um, that, you know, and then somehow – State by Washington in Washington. I know they're not really good right now, but that game is, it doesn't matter. You know, it's pro football, and of course, it's any any given Sunday to be as cliche as I can possibly be, but we're just hoping that the lonely Cowboys actually win their last two games and get in the playoffs for the first time in a long time. It's going to happen. The Cowboys are going to be there. There's no doubt about it, and I definitely going to be thinking about you watching those last two Cowboys games, knowing you're a fan, going to be pulling for those Cowboys. Uh, I tell you what, Brad, you <laughs> it's going to be interesting. You you just bring so much to the table. I tell you what, going back and look at some of your roles, I'm just, you know, oh, it's all coming back to me. Watching you in The Patriot, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was one of my favorite movies growing up as uh, the original one, and just to see you in that remake, going all the way up through uh, your role in, in, in Friday Night Lights, the, the original movie, and into the show. Uh, Brad, I tell you what, there's just, like I said, and that's kind of what's led to, to me seeking you out to talk to you because I just something about you just jumped off, and I think it's like that for a lot of people. Make sure your daughters know that, you, that the good old dad is just someone that uh, a lot of people look at and really admire. Brad, you're just, you just come across as such a great guy. I cannot thank you enough uh, for taking time today. Hey, my pleasure. We'll get together in Kansas City, and you can tell me some of your special uh, stakes. I know you guys are Hey, we can, we can do that, although... Beer. Uh, we might have to let the coyotes eat them like we did in uh, season three of Friday Night Lights when you just threw the steaks uh, out into the woods. We hopefully won't have to let the coyotes eat them. Exactly. And the, you know, I was throwing away really good prep of ribeyes, too. Yeah. And oh. I was prime. I couldn't, you know, because we were going to eat some of those later, and I ended up throwing so many of them in the dirt, we never ate them. But the prop guy bought really nice steaks. I'm like, what are we doing throwing these? We need to buy some happy steaks. <laughs> That's amazing. I hate throwing these in the bushes. This is crazy. You guys nuts? Oh, my and gosh. I'm probably throwing away five or six really nice hunks of meat. Anyway, that's the way it goes. Oh, I love it. Hey, yeah. Brett, I'll tell you what. You guys, you and your family, you just have the the uh, the best uh, holiday season possible. I'll definitely, uh, I'm going to keep bothering Sean because I tell you what, uh, your your agent, Sean, man, Sean West, he he is he's great, man. I, we've been bothering him since uh, July. He's kept up with us. He keeps getting back to us. I'm so glad he did. Uh, definitely one of our best guests we've ever had on, Brad, and we'll keep up with him. If you're ever in KC, we'll, we'll definitely make it happen. We'll take you out for some steak, get you to a Chiefs game. We'll, uh, we'll do it upright, my man. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Brad. Have a great one. Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.